Hello there, Commonwealth from here. The Legend of Zelda is a franchise that until 2011 didn't have a proper beginning and to this day doesn't have a proper end. Or more specifically, an alpha and an omega. And the end doesn't mean the end of the franchise and new Zelda games, but the end of the curse. And with it, the first timeline in the Eternal Zelda series. An ending that has been teased throughout Breath of the Wild and many of the memory cutscenes found in this one. And yes, here is your spoiler warning if you haven't finished Skyward Sword or Skyward Sword HD since we end to the curse and the nature of it. The King of the Demon Tribe is the first villain in the Zelda timeline as he is presented in the prologue to Skyward Sword as the commander of the invasion force from the dark underground below the surface, craving the complete Triforce that was back then still under the protection of Goddess Hylia before she sent it up along with the human survivors off the surface up to the skies and placed a cloud barrier to keep them safe from the monsters below. The mice was then defeated by the goddess and humiliated by being turned into the imprisoned in what became the sealed crowns. As a part of her greater plan, the goddess also sacrificed her own immortality to reincarnate as a mortal human or the first Zelda who was close to the knight that would pull the goddess sword and become the chosen hero of the goddess, all so that he would forge the goddess sword into the master sword. By blessing the blade, Zelda, the first bloodline incarnation of the goddess, brought up the true form of the sword that would follow the hero to the Triforce and with it the crushing of the imprisoned in present times. Even so, the servant and anti-master sword of demise, Lord Girahim, abducted Zelda and completed his ritual in the past, just to fail to strike down the hero and instead seeing himself dissolve and his master demise being defeated, falling down and being sealed, but not before casting the curse that has persisted throughout the entire franchise. Though this is not the end, my hate never perishes. It is born in a cycle of no end. I will rise again. Those like you, those who share the blood of the goddess and the spirit of the hero, they are eternally bound to this curse. An incarnation of my hatred shall ever follow your kind dooming them to wander a blood-soaked sea of darkness for all time. The remains of the mice were sealed in the Master Sword and continued to be watched over by the spirit of the Master Sword, Fai. And if you want to own a Master Sword of your own, then you should go and check out Heroic Replicas and buy one of those Master Swords that are of far better quality than anywhere else, just like the one that I have and which is a truly incredible set piece that fits my Hylian Champion tunic perfectly. So go and check out HeroicReplicas.com. The hatred of the mice continues to plague the land of Hyrule, as Ganondorf succeeded the mice in the hunt after the complete Triforce. And it would also explain his determination to bring down the kingdom that was founded over the first Demon King's sealed remains. Through the mice's hatred, Ganondorf claimed the Triforce of Power and turned the hero of time's life into a misery, invading the kingdom of Hyrule both as the king of evil Ganondorf and then as the Demon King Ganon. And in three different timeline branches, after the original branch split, along with the Triforce into free and Ocarina of Time, from this point on, the cycle of invasion, defeat and reincarnation continued. Until Ganondorf didn't reincarnate, but remained alive for tens of thousands of years and could only unleash puppet calamities from the underground. Despite being contained in the past, the latest one, 100 years ago, brought the downfall of the Kingdom of Hyrule and nearly all of its citizens. But not the end for Link and Zelda who 100 years later stand upon a historical opportunity to not only confront Ganondorf the decisive duel, but possibly also the curse of Demise's hatred behind him, and which could prevent another resurgence and incarnation of Ganondorf Ganon after his death. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you four possible ways to end the curse and where two of these might secure lasting peace for what remains of the Kingdom of Hyrule in the Era of the Wild. Possibility 1. Destroying the complete Triforce Both Demise and Ganondorf has no greater motivation than to claim the complete Triforce. So maybe destroying it is the solution. Sadly, not, as destroying the only relic left behind by the three golden goddesses, Din, Nehru and Feror, will only cause the collapse of the land of Hyrule with all its people, just as what was the case with Lurul after its Triforce was destroyed in a link between worlds. In that case, using the Triforce of Hyrule, restore the Triforce of Lurul and save the crumbling kingdom from eradication. In other words, destroying the Triforce will destroy the curse, but it will also destroy everything that we know and love in Hyrule. Possibility 2. 
killing Ganondorf first. No, you really cannot do that, because the curse will just reincarnate in the later generation, and the cycle will just continue. The opportunity is wasted, there is peace during this generation. What the Hylians need is a permanent solution, one that can avoid this from ever happening again. But what do I mean by killing Ganondorf first? Simple, going straight for the kill without any other condition being fulfilled beforehand. Stabbing evil and finishing it during your generation. You see, to fight and defeat Ganondorf successfully in the past Zelda games, Link has needed two things. The Master Sword and the Triforce of Courage. Plus some assistance from Princess Zelda in sections of the final battle. Though in those cases the curse wasn't lifted, as Ganondorf Ganon returned again and again while in Hyrule, and Maladus rose just a few generations after Link and Tetra reached new Hyrule. In other words, stabbing Ganondorf isn't enough, so let's listen to the wording of the conditions of Demise's curse. Those like you, those who share the blood of the goddess and the spirit of the hero, they are eternally bound to this curse. An incarnation of my hatred shall ever follow your kind, dooming them to wander a blood-soaked sea of darkness for all time. Blood of the goddess, causing the incarnation of the miser's hatred to rise. And with the rise of this one comes the awakening and rise of the spirit of the hero. In other words, if you sever the bloodline, there cannot be another incarnation of the miser's hatred. Which brings us over to possibility 3. Zelda dying with no offspring before Link kills Ganondorf. Now we are talking, Zelda making the ultimate sacrifice for the remaining Hylians and the future of Hyrule, setting the stage for Link to end Ganondorf once and for all, who will for the first time be in mortal danger as the curse will no longer be in effect after the divine and royal bloodline is gone. Just think of it, what has Zelda been doing since the calamity struck, putting her own life on the line? It is foreshadowing of her destiny to end the curse by bringing an end to her bloodline before Link ends Ganondorf. The Hyrule the princess knew is all gone, as only refugees from South Central Hyrule made it behind the walls of Fort Ateno, and only a handful elderly individuals remain from her time. If the Great Deku Tree is also gone, that means that everyone she loved and cared about 100 years ago besides Link are all gone, or will soon pass away. Her father, Rebosa, the Rook, Rivali and Mifa have all passed away, and her close friend Impa is possibly also reaching her end, unless Pura can do something about that aging process. Zelda has seen everyone make the sacrifice to buy her time to awaken her power, including Link, who witnessed how Zelda finally awakened her power, not only by showing her feelings for Link, but also, just like the goddess in the ancient battle against the mice, putting a life on the line in front of that guardian, Calamity Ganon, and now in the sequel against Ganondorf, before falling down. The princess represents a bygone era of absolute rule, while the survivors over the last century have moved on to less royal form of governance. It is quite possible that just like King Daphnis, Zelda of the Wild will see that this is the greatest thing she can deliver, Hyrule, hope and a peaceful future without the curse that ends in Hyrule, fulfilling the name of the Legend of Zelda. Can you imagine that? That would be such a Fujibayashi move, though there's one final possible way that might save Zelda from not living her life with her precious Link. Namely possibility 4, destroying the Master Sword, which was also teased in the two final memory cutscenes, along with Zelda's awakening. And through the end of Fai and the blade she has slumbered in for tens of thousands of years, free the mice so that the hero of the wild can destroy the mice and his curse once and for all. The end of the Master Sword timeline as we know it since forging it in Skyward Sword, seeing it damaged in Breath of the Wild, and now possibly seeing it being destroyed in the sequel. A beginning and an end for the Master Sword, which has been used specifically to kill Ganondorf, Ganon, and of course, First Demise, bringing a new main villain in the franchise from 2027 on the next Nintendo system. An eternal legend with no end but which just starts at new with a new blade and villain which will connect to a new line of Links and Zeldas of the 20 games of the previous timeline, the Alpha and the Omega. And after the Omega, another Alpha that will bring the franchise to the next generations of Nintendo systems and gamers. That is how you end and create excitement for a new beginning. The end of one chapter in this timeline series filled with time travel to start another 20 games in the next 35 years. 
And that is how it is. You cannot destroy the Triforce. You cannot defeat Ganondorf first as he will rise again or by possibly removing the blood and or the sword of the spirit, you might just be able to confront the curse and conquer it to end the first book of the Legend of Zelda and have director Hidemaru Fujibayashi writing the beginning in Skyward Sword and the ending in Breath of the Wild sequel to this book. That seems to be the destiny. But what do you think about this theory? Can the curse be confronted and lifted, or is it a premise that will forever remain in the series with Ganondorf, Zelda and Link? Sound off in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, then be sure to press that like button, subscribe, plus press that notification bell to not miss any upcoming Zelda videos and theories, and help us on our push to 300,000 subscribers. And with it, our big giveaway. A big thanks goes to all our patreon.com slash commonrealm patrons, and in particular to our royal producer Charles Shash. You rock, and please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.